Okay. So, um, hi. Here's the second uh, segment inside of our discussion on vector spaces. This one is the example of R3. Okay. So in R2, what we want to remember in R2, okay, this was the set of all duples. Okay, basically that was V equal to, and we had V1, V2. R3, okay, is the set of all triples. All what we call real value triples. That is, is that there are real numbers within the vectors. Okay, so this is V equal to, and we'll write them as column vector, V1, V2, V3. Okay, now there's the triples, right? And V1, we'll call them the VIs, belong to R. Really important that that's the case. Now, we're going to talk quite a bit about um, the geometry and geometry of subspaces. But one thing to get here is, is that we cannot add elements of R2 to R3. Of R2 to those from R3. All right. So what we mean by that is something along the lines of this, okay? Right? Take V1, V2, V3, okay? And we'll add that to plus U1, U2. You can kind of see that this is pretty much nonsensical, right? Uh, what do I do with V3? The answer is nothing because we can't do this. We cannot do this. So we don't add add uh, R2 to R3. And the reason why I bring that up, or elements of R2 are not elements in R3. Okay, that's another one. Remember that in order for um, a set V to be a vector space, we have to be closed under scalar addition. Well, clearly, you know, the elements of R2 are not going to belong to uh, R3 because we can't add them together, right? R3 is a vector space. I can't add an element of R2 to an element of R3. So consequently, the elements of R2 are not in the vector space R3, okay? The reason why this is going to be important is because we're going to visualize R3 as a volume, right? A three-dimensional space. And we're oftentimes going to view that as like X, Y, Z, okay? Now, that's a way of thinking about R3, and it's a valid way of thinking about R3. The problem is, is that within that, there's just that XY plane, okay? We might imagine that XY plane having the Z vector coming up. Well, the problem there is, is that that XY plane is also visualized as R2. And so some people think that R2 is in R3. That's not true. That's not how this works, okay? In fact, what we end up having is we have that only, right, okay, we end up having vectors that look like this, right? Okay, so elements of R3, V, right? Belonging to R3, okay? Such that V equals, and what we'll have is say V1, V2, and then a zero here for the third term. Now those, these are on the XY plane. Okay, and they're in R3 because they have three terms. This guy right here, U, not in R3. So consequently, I just wanna like kind of prevent some uh, confusion. When we talk about R3, R3 is the set of triples, right? So every vector's got three real numbered components in it, all right? And that's what makes it an element of R3. And then we visualize it as three-dimensional space, okay? And then we visualize it as three-dimensional space. Um, what you'll see is that with R3, we get back all of the things that we thought we were gonna get. We're get. We get closure under addition. We get closure under scalar multiplication, okay? We get commutivity of, uh, of addition. We get the zero vector. We get associativity of addition. We get the distribution properties. Everything's in there in R3, right? Okay, it's just R2 is not part of R3, all right? They're not, one's not a subset of the other, okay? So let's talk about the geometry now.
right? You got the three dimensional plane. Now the nice thing about linear algebra is that these are all gonna be linear. So consequently, they're gonna be like linear vectors. So for example, we could take V equal to, okay, we're gonna let uh, this one here be X, this will be Y, this will be Z. Let's let V equal one, negative one, three, okay? So this is one, we will go one down on X, negative one in the Y direction, okay? And then up three in the Z direction. So this is, uh, call it one, two, three. So it's probably right about there, okay? There's that vector, okay? If I wanna scale it, two times V is gonna equal two, negative two, three, okay? And what is it gonna do? It's gonna just stretch. It's gonna go along the same direction, okay? So that scalar multiplication is just gonna stretch it by two, okay? Um, what if we want to add two of them? Let's take W. We'll let W equal 1, 3, negative 1. We're going to still take uh, tip to tail, right? So we go, we've gone over 1, back, back 1, up 3. Now we're going to go um, over 1 in the X direction, this way, okay? Up 3, so in the Y direction. So that's going to take me, right, um, back. One, two, three. So right about here. Okay. And then negative one in the Z direction. Okay. So it's going to take me down quite a bit right about there. Okay. Yep. Kind of hard to see and very hard to do. Luckily, you're not going to do a lot of adding of vectors geometrically, but you should at least know that they are going to be working tip to tail. And so my resultant vector is this guy right here. Okay. Is that blue one? All right. Still working tip to tail. We still have a zero vector. The zero vector is going to hit right here, right in the middle. Okay. So we've got scalar multiplication. We've got addition, right? That remains inside of the, uh, inside of the system. We're still working tip to tail. We will still have commutativity of addition. Everything else is going to work along those lines, right? And so we kind of just imagine this is what's going to happen, right? Okay. If I multiply... My vector, right, negative one times V, right, equal to negative one, one, three. That one is going to be in the exact opposite direction of my original vector, but same length. Identical length, opposite direction. All right. And so that's basically the geometry on R3. Not a heck of a lot to it. Um, Basically, it is, I think it is. It's working in three dimensions. Um, and all the properties of a vector space carry over into R3. That's the video.